meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Diction, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Hey everybody. What's happening? What's happening? All right, looking good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, Quagmire. You want to uh, ready to uh, deliver a show tonight? Yeah, let's just go right to it, shall we? Let's get to the calls. All right, do you have anything to talk about? No. Right. But the callers may remind me of something I need uh, to complain I, about. I imagine they will. I, they've never done that before, but tonight I suspect they will. Mm -hmm. So let's just uh, go to the phones and okay. see who inspires me. I got a good idea. Hmm. Why don't we go to the phones? And see who inspires me. Yeah. Billy? Yeah. You're 22? Yep. What's happening? Um, uh, for the past, like, I don't know, four or five months now, I've been having problems, like, you know, getting off as in ejaculating when I'm having sex with my fiancé. Mm -hmm. And I think it's due to the problem that I'll masturbate maybe, like, once or twice a day. But the problem that I'm seeing is that I'll stop for, like, a week or two, and I'll mm -hmm. still have the same problem when I'm having sex with her. You want any medication? No. Mm -hmm. Any medical problems? Nope. And you're unable to, no matter how long you go along with her. Right. But when I masturbate, I'll like, get all fine. Oh, well, oh, when you're by yourself? Yeah. Anything wrong with the relationship? No, huh? The relationship's great. I mean, we only have like, one like, little tiny problem, but that'll be a problem that'll happen in the future. What's that? Um, my dream since I've been a kid is to play drums in a band. And I got this new band called Nate starting up, and I'm a... Uh, We'll be able to get pretty far with it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I want to drop the name of the band? Right. I didn't even, it's, uh, by the way, here's... Uh, let me explain something. Here's how you know you, you've picked a bad name for your band. He said the name of the band 11 seconds ago, and I can't remember what the name of the band was. Yeah. It didn't, it, it didn't quite even register as a name. No, it's like... Uh, I'm in a band. We started the band... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I was... Uh, I was thinking, I, mean, I got to do this Comedy Central thing uh, next week, and I was thinking to myself, you know, here's how you know you've uh, failed as a network when uh, it's your 13th year anniversary, and most people still call it the Comedy Network Ooh. or the Comedy Station. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't know Comedy Central. Yeah. Bravo, no problem. MTV, done. Uh, you're, uh, that's on the Comedy Network, right? Comedy Showcase, Comedy Station, <laughs> Comedy Channel. It's all right. Uh, Comedy Network. Yeah. Here we go. Comedy Central, everybody. All right. So let's go on. I don't care about that. No, no, let's keep going. And, 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 how many times have I said we should never start the show by talking to a guy? Yeah, let's talk to Sarah. All right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Who's Hi. right? You are right. Hi, Sarah. See, much better already. You're 19. What's up? Okay. I have a bit of a problem. All right. I can't have an orgasm during sex. I just yes. can't do it. That's normal. You and every other woman on the planet. Right. Every <laughs> one of them. Well, a, a significant percentage. Yes. Like 100%. And, and in all probability, it will never happen. Well, no. now it won't. Now no, it that's won't. true, Sarah. My mm. friend has them all the time. I know. That is her version. She's probably multi-orgasmic, in fact. Right? She does. Yeah, that's a different physiology. You're different. By the way, than she your is. friend has it all the time. It's like saying, "I know a guy who can dunk a basketball." Right, exactly. It's the same exact thing. It's a, he's a different person. She's a different person, wired differently than you. Right. This is the most a, a significant percentage of women. In fact, a majority. Right. Never have orgasm during intercourse. One hundred percent. I can't even have it during oral sex, though. Well, that's yeah. well. This might okay. I can't let, have let's have an orgasm when I'm with a guy. That's Do you use a vibrator? Yeah, sometimes. See, maybe that's over over doing it. Hold on a second. Desensitizing. She may be you. scrambling her area. All right, now listen, Drew. Mm. Women who can't have an orgasm. Okay, if I tell you this is an 18, 19 year old woman, she has an orgasm via oral sex, but can't have one during uh, intercourse. Yes. By the time she's 28. Yep. What percentage of those women will have it? You know, if yeah, it's with, zero now. If it, if it's wait, wait. It's a nineteen-year-old who's having it with oral sex, but not with intercourse. What percentage of those will eventually be ten able, years later? 
10, 20 percent. I was going to say 20 percent, yeah. maybe 15, 20 yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, right in there. So a certain percentage of those will right. reclaim now, the territory. Same woman not having an orgasm via oral sex. Will will claim that territory, uh, most of them. Most of them will, 70%. Yeah, we'll get that. 80% will claim that. Yes. But out of that that, that group, it's uh, Zero. less than 1% Zero, is yeah. going to have the... The orgasm during intercourse. Right. And the whole like, time... This is like the doctor where the guy's saying, am I going to be able to play football again? Son, you may not walk again. Right. This is you that. know, this is... This we we got to get you... We focus on walking. Yes, this is that category. Now, the whole right. time, there's a group of about 5% of women... Orgasms falling out all over the place every time all, they have, all they have penetration, three, six orgasms. No, it's coming out like uh, one of those uh, Roman candles, drug running boats, and uh, the DEA's behind them, yeah. and they're just chucking the key, the kilos of weed over the side, just oh, just littering the ocean with orgasms. All right, Sarah. Yeah. Do not focus. On, on the making, making the soccer team. You may never walk again. No, but I want... That's the thing. I don't know if it's from things from when I was younger, if it's like a mental thing or... No? What happened when you were younger? Actually, the first time I ever had sex, I talked to you guys. Wow. When was that? 1971. <laughs> no, it was a couple years ago. I called because I, I don't even think you'd remember. I had sex with somebody... Who was in a worked in a hotel and like I had to press charges and oh my god I do remember your call remember her yeah. parents yeah. were there of Kobe. course I remember this call I mean your parents yeah yeah you, you were, it was a the guy was like a housekeeper and yeah, yeah and you yeah, yeah. You, you sounded a lot younger back then yeah. oh well, thank you yeah see uh, no but I mean you really we, sounded it was disturbing because you sounded so young yeah 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 uh, see we remember everyone who calls the show. Yeah. And did what finally so. happened with that, with the illegal battle? I remember we also told you to call back and tell us what happened, so now here we are. Well, technically I wasn't supposed to, but it well, all ended up really well. What happened? Um, well, prizes Ooh, or, settled um, out of court. Yeah. charges wow. weren't pressed, but you I... You got some I, yeah. money. Yeah. Money from the hotel. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good And times. we also said to make sure you got some therapy. Did you, did you do that? I did. I did. Okay. All right. I had good times. Well, I'll talk to Sarah. Come ah, on. Who cares? Oh, my God. Look. Really? Uh, that, that, to me, that, that story was a loose end. It, it bothered me for a long yeah, time. Yeah. I could see you were plagued. Sarah? But I don't know if that would have anything to... I don't know. It seems yeah. like I can almost have an orgasm, but then, like, I can't do it. Okay. You have a boyfriend you love? I did. I did for two years, but not anymore. Okay. Yeah, that's what you need. Me, so. you, you need that. You and then what? You gotta, what do you do? He he hit me, so it didn't work out. And then oh. you you dumped him right then, yes? Yeah. Good good times. Well, no, it it took a month or so, but mm, eventually that hotel should probably get some of their money back. <laughs> All right, wait, wait, were you abused as a kid? No. All right, all right. Watch. Uh, I don't trust these guys you're hanging out with. You find a guy you can be close to, you care about, and focus on orgasm with oral sex. Yeah, that's where the money's going to be. That's the key. And uh, I don't know. Is there some chicks can put on their ceiling, some sort of uh, a gasminator or something, or some sort of glowing orb or something that can bring them? Let me tell you something about chicks. Tell me. Let me tell you what you could do with a chick. You could. I. I could bring home a uh, one of those orange utility balls and write or orgasminator on it and uh, say, uh, "What? What is this? Oh, I. I got it from Europe." It uh, guarantees, oh, uh, yeah, you mount it on the ceiling, it's 100%. You, you stare at it, you'll have a... They start staring at the utility ball when, uh, while you I need, go down on need, them, they no. would have an orgasm. You need to attach some story. There need to be a lot of story. Like, yes, your, 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 your I, I, dead relatives will be uh, sort of... Uh, no, Drew, you don't, don't bring through up this. the dead relatives when you're talking about orgasm, you idiot. You just tell them, uh, Oprah recommended it. Okay. Uh, I read about it in Cosmo. And it comes from Europe. Those are all good things. And they would just stare at it. They would just stare at it, and I believe they could, it would loosen themselves up to have an orgasm. Let me tell you a problem with women. Women, do not underestimate the power of focus. Let me tell you something, Drew. Tell me. I'm a uh, champion chair balancer. That's what I learned in school. It would Which, balance a yeah, chair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the way you balance a chair... Or you do anything like that. Is you have to, you have to pick a spot on your, the wall your, your and poor, you have to stare at it. Your poor brain was so underprivileged. 
Understimulated. Uh, well, I couldn't read or write, so I just have to sit there in these classes, and uh-huh. I didn't know what to do. So I would just lean back and try to balance my chair and stuff. And you know, L.A. City Unified School District—they're just warehousing. I wasn't going anywhere. It's like you were some sort of Buddhist monk. I was just Eat hanging chanting. out. I didn't have any, I was. I was. You know, I was. Uh, I, I was uh, raised in a uh, you know deprivation chamber. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of idiots. Just uh, I did just sitting there. Well, but I didn't know I was a genius. I thought I was uh, an idiot. Okay, of course, yes. I'll check the report card. <laughs> See who thinks he's a genius. What was your IQ again? Uh, uh, okay. In the low 90s? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? In low 90s. Okay. Point is, is I would pick it. I would pick, you pick a spot on the wall. Yeah. Pick something and stare at it. Yeah. And if you stare at that one spot, you can balance your chair. Yeah. All you got to do is shift your eyes down or up and you'll fall over. Uh, power of the mind. Very important. Uh, women lying on their backs, sort of staring up, looking at the clock, looking at the TV, looking back at the ceiling fan, then looking down again, looking at the guy's head. I don't know. I feel like if there was something that they could lock on to and really lose themselves in yeah. and really focus on and get them 30% closer. Could be. It's all in their brain anyway. Yep, that's right. Maybe we should do something that goes on the ceiling, Drew. Maybe maybe it's just to hang in there poster I was with, think of the the cat. Name with the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Just something. You know when you go to this crappy it's dentist good. office and they put something on the and put a little picture of the rainforest on the ceiling. So when, yeah. when you get in your root canal, you can think about trees. Hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something on the ceiling. Something for them to focus on. If we could figure out some sort of repetitive pattern yeah, light yeah. system, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That just sort of did like a new, 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 something in succession, something in order, something that they could pick up on and, and almost not hypnotize, but sort of put themselves into that place. Think about that, Drew. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of some sort of focus, name baby. For us that we need. That Forget about the name. You focus on the technology. Okay. Okay? Yeah. There's a new thing out there that does this. Not for the orgasm, but there's some sort of, eh, if you want to quit smoking or something, there's some new feedback thing or hmm. something you were telling me about. Don't give me the huh. You know about it. Well, there's all kinds about feedback. Yeah, but this is a newer, this is a, 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 a newer a technique that, yeah. uh, I don't know, has a, you put, you put goggles on and it shows you something in order. Hmm. Come on, buddy. Go on. You remember the call that remember the housemate that got raped five years ago? You don't remember what you were telling I, I me? I wonder if Bruce or somebody was talking no. about that. Bruce doesn't talk about it. <laughs> Bruce is an idiot. Bruce. Maggie? Yeah. You're twenty four? I am. No, Drew, you were talking about it. one of our callers brought it up and you were like, Well, that can work, but it's controversial. it's a newer thing. Oh, EMDR. Oh no, 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 no. That's where you the eye movement thing. That's just they make them move their eyes in a certain way. They, they don't look at anything, really. They, they look at a little box with a light to keep their eye focused on it. But, well, what am I but, talking but, about? But, they, but just sort of t- tell them where to direct their eyes, and they, they're, they're t- told to move their eyes back and forth. Okay, what was I talking about for the last 10 minutes? Well, something that moved, that's, you know, attracted your attention and moved around. All right. Um, I, and, uh, I spontaneously took your mind. Uh, right. Not yet we How had to you. willfully do th- to, you know, follow a series uh, of instructions. Re- all right, all right. What, Maggie? Yeah? You're 24? Yes. What's up? Okay. Um, I got my first period when I was 11, and ever since then, I have never had regular periods. Mm-hmm. And That's my husband fine. and I want to have a baby as soon as we get to live together again. But Why you live? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is bad I love, sign. I love the way that's people leave sign. these, uh, drop these bombs. Uh, if he's in the military, that's all right. Yeah, he is. He's over all in right. Germany. Okay. And um, yeah. so as soon as we get to live in the same house again, we want to start working on having a family. Yeah. But What's he doing I mean, in Germany? What are they doing over there? I can't tell you. Oh, really? Uh, no, that's where he's stationed. Right. It's usually like Frankfurt or something. Uh, by the way, I always, uh, lo- you know, What's he doing in Germany? Well, that's where he's stationed. <laughs> ah. Oh. So he's not supposed to be in Iraq and just uh, bivouacking in Mainz. Yeah. I see. That's where he's stationed. Yeah. Oh, well. You got it. Well, there you go. All right. All right. So that's where he's stationed. Yeah, it's where he got sent. What's he doing over there? What kind of work. Does he do anything? He, he, uh, he does maintenance on our planes. Okay. Our planes. Yes, right. Our, he's he's our working for the. Planes. Yeah, okay. he's not servicing, let's say, uh, Axis of Evil planes. No. No. Or Doctor Evil's planes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So he's working. He says uh, he's working for our government over there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. When you say our planes, I thought maybe you were going to say he's part of some airborne division or something no. specific where you're stationed now, you're living on the, say, on the grounds of some no, right, true. That's reserve. Enough. That's enough. Yeah, no, I'm not military. All right. So when's he coming back? Well, actually, he he's staying there for three more years, but I'm in the States. I graduate college this year. Why did you guys get ma married if you can't live together? Well, we, we did until he got sent to Germany. Ooh. Didn't you know he'd be there for four years? Yes, but we didn't know that when we got married. It was two okay. years after we got married that he got sent there. All right. Okay. So now you're finishing college, and uh, you want to have a kid. This doesn't sound like doesn't doesn't the take, take into account that sort of thing? I don't know. I'm done caring. Uh, Here's the point. You, you weren't caring when we she, started. She wants you? to have, I know, but now, before I was through caring, now I'm done. Okay. You see the subtle difference? You know, somebody was telling me tonight. You know what "finished" or "done" is in Hawaiian? Mahalo, pow, <laughs> pow. That's the sound it makes when a uh, when a, a Samoan uh, has an orgasm. I, I was talking about a patient. I go, "Hey, that's that patient's not compliant." Pow, out of here. And she goes, "You speak Hawaiian?" I go, "No, no." I go, "It's a pow. Get him out." Well, that means finished. He's done. I go, "Yeah, he's finished. He's done. Pow. Get him out of here." Pow. I that's, like that. That's something. Um, all right. So. Can she have a kid even though she's had irregular periods? Maggie, have you yeah. had your irregular periods evaluated? Do you know do you have polycystic ovaries? Do you have endometriosis? Do you have any other problems? I've, that, I've had, like, blood tests and stuff done, and they've all said that I'm pretty normal. You having your regular period says, says what? Like, I can have three in a row and then not have one for eight months, and then the next year I might have two, and then, like, they're highly erratic. It, it doesn't necessarily mean anything, but you you may be having anovulatory cycles. You may have polycystic ovaries. You you need to see a gynecologist and get an ultrasound and see if there are things that need to be sort of attended to as you work through your fertility. Okay. Well, I brought it up to my doctor, and he doesn't seem to care. So what kind of doctor? Oh, uh, I don't know. I see what. Yeah. See, yeah, Maggie. Adam doesn't care either, so... Right. Now, me and your doctor should get together and start a club. What uh, What kind of doctor is it? The kind of... Uh, well, since my husband's in the military, I only can go to the ones they tell me to, and it's a well, family practitioner. All right, you need to see a gynecologist. Okay. Okay? All right, baby doll. Okay. Good thank time. You very yeah. Military military gynecologist. Wow. There's... there. Oxymoron. There's a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Jackman. Military gynecologist. This week, he bust. Who are we talking to? Oh, a sorry. rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Al Qaeda women trying to smuggle explosives into the country. Call on Hank Jackman, military gynecologist. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, play that rape. Oh, do you have that uh, that whole drop? In and order to reach these kids. Hack will have to become a rapist. <laughs> He's coming up next week. Oh, uh, who is that? Is Titus? Uh, Will, Will Arnett? Arnett? Oh, Will Arnett, yeah, from uh, Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Yeah, show's doing good. All right, remind me when he comes in to get him to do those rapist things. I don't think we'll have to remind. You'll, you'll launch into that immediately. Always my favorite. And Anderson will remind you with a couple of drops. All right, well, just do uh, this week on. Why don't Hack. I, you know, I, can yeah. I be honest with you? I don't find that funny. Who gives a rat's ass? I'm just telling you. I don't, well, listen, is, is if you don't else? find it funny, there's a better or not chance it's hysterical. Could be. I, most, I find many things you do funny. I Thank don't you. find that's funny. A rapist. A rapist. <laughs> a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't doing it right, by the way. What do you mean? Well, I mean, the, the joke is, this week on Hack, in order to catch a counterfeiter... Hack is going to have to become, become a counterfeit or rapist. Uh, Drew, what, what is that impulse with you? What is your impulse to slide in and F everything up in the last 10 seconds? Of what, what's your impulse what, to... What is your impulse? What is your impulse to stop what you're doing? I'm just talking along with you. I, I'm a rapist. You're not talking along with me. You slide in in the last quarter of the thing and screw it up. What, what is that impulse? Why can't you sit still? I'm explaining to you, you, go, look, I don't find that funny. And I go, oh, okay, I'll look, here's how it goes. It goes, in order to, this week on Hack, in order to catch a, a counterfeiter, Hack is going to, and then you slide in. There's, there's six seconds left. 
that, what's why why so you can not be wrong or like what's that what's that slide in impulse there? Huh? Oh, true. Let's see now. Now he gets all coy because he's like a he's like a beat dog. But what is that impulse? It's it's what I could say. maybe I don't understand it, but it's talking along with like yeah yeah uh huh yeah, yeah 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 that that's what that is. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of that, you stop and have a fit about it. I'm, I'm, f- I, I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm finishing I'm, I'm trying, a story. Yeah, I'm trying to talk I'm along with you. you just it, like that. That's it. That's you what that jump is. in with this. Yeah, I'm talking along with uh, you. You're, you're, you're talking, talking with, along with me. I'm a, Actually, it, it would right, be. Anderson, give me a, please, give me a witness, would you? Yeah, I, I heard you do it, Drew. Oh, no, I didn't say I don't do it. I know I do it. But I'm saying, what is the impulse he's asking? And I'm saying it's. Talking. Oh, going. How, about, how about this? How? What do you mean? How about? How about when a, a caller asks a question, I dare to take a sip off my coffee mug. There's just dead air because you're not jumping in there, but you slide in at the end to f something up. Hey, Drew, I, I agree with you on like 99 percent of the stuff, but this time I, I heard you talking and I closed my eyes and just braced myself because I knew that he was not going to dig it. But but he's asking what's the. I understand he doesn't like that, but obviously I have an impulse to do it, and he's asking what's the impulse. What is the impulse, Anderson? You have any theory? I, I think it goes with your whole thing that you have to get something done right when it, when you have it handed to you. And, like, you want to get to the punchline. You want to help him to the punchline. So it's a codependency, which, which, which yeah, finishing so you wanna, sentences. You, you want to, like, you guess like, or help or yeah, push right. or, or finishing, something. Finishing sentences. But it's wrong. It's, it's wrong 90% of the time. So ignore it. I can't ignore it. You asked me to tell the joke. Yeah, and you but ignore it. me. Don't, I can't don't. ignore it. It's a verbal Why? You do thing. it all the time. You're doing it right now. How can I ignore it if you're asking me to say something or do and something? And I talk and with you like you're doing right s- now. You just ignore it. On right. it. Now you seem you to have no problem right it. now. This is not. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why can't you Drew? do it? How can. What do you mean? Hey, why don't you ignore it next time you're singing I'll, and someone slides in during the crescendo and starts uh, singing a different so song so next to you? Just it, ignore it. It's an ego thing with you as far as telling a joke. You, you have to. Everybody stand it's back. It's not and, an ego thing for me. It's a rhythm thing. But everyone has to stand back and hold our breath. Like, oh, oh, my God. You're telling up, a joke. Drew, oh, my God. Everyone has to stand. You, you I, I asked follow- me. What? Everyone, no, you don't have to stand back and 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 you know sit at, at, at my at my ham in awe. You just have to let me explain or get through or express whatever it is I was trying to express. That's it's not like we're having a debate or an argument. That's a different situation. You want to know what was funny about this thing? I was going to execute it for you, and then you slide in and step on the last part. I apologize, but does what? it need it? Does it need the huge reaction? Yes, or? yes, because you do it all the time. It's, it's, it's. I, uh, all right. Hey, Listen. Drew. Yeah. You should take Adam to work with you one time because you know he won't be able to keep his mouth shut. And then it's in his, it's in your arena, and you can say, "Hey, step off." All right. Let's just play it again. Can you play that again? No, I know I do that. It's not. It's not that I'm saying I don't do it. I know I do. I apologize for doing it. But you're asking what? What's the impulse? And I'm saying why do we have to stop the show for ten minutes? I know, but the, understand. What, what if you, I, you said? What if we're sitting at a dinner d- table and you said like someone said, Drew, tell that joke you tell. Tell that funny joke you tell. And so you told, told the joke and you got you got toward the end. And as you got the end, I slid in and said, oh, I tried to guess the punchline at the, well, at the well, very people, end. A, a people do that all the time. But B. Yeah, they're idiots. I, I don't. I don't. The part of the problem we get into here is I don't realize you're telling a joke. I'm thinking that you're telling. I thought we were having how, a discussion. How could it be more obvious when I went into the voice and did the whole thing? In order to reach these kids, replay. We'll have you to have become it, Anderson? a rapist. <laughs> Anderson, have what? Come on, replay what Drew did and what I said. Uh, that no, takes I, a lot of work. No, no, you, you, I, I know what I did, and I know. No, you, you were, don't. No, you were. Yes, you were launching into this thing. Here's how he said it wrong. The way to do it is. And, I still want to know the, how to do it. Yeah, I do too. Now, how dare you? Well, now here you are going into the coy passive no, thing. You're not gonna, listen, not I got, I got momentum from last night. We'll talk off the air. All right, we're taking a break. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Love line. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Every hour. Yeah! Hey, everybody. It's Love Live. Drew and I are arguing all the way through the bathroom break. Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Uh, oh, we need a guest in here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
In order to catch a killer, Hank's got to become a killer. All right. Hey, Drew. Drew doesn't know what he does. He no, really no, I know, I know what I do. I don't know, I don't know how to stop. And that's why, unless well, I became all right, but get here's a what you need to examine. It. You, you were like, hey, look, I don't think that's funny. And then the person, me, said, well, let me explain how you do it. And I got three quarters into it. And then you, right at the end, you went, yeah, I know, he becomes a rapist. But, and by the way, you got it. You screwed it up, which is, which is not even the point, but uh, right. it's not something bad to focus on. It's like, well, why do you got to, why do you got to jump in and step on it? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Let the person counter. Like, okay, you said, look, I don't think this is this way. Let the person go on. Well, let me show you why I think it's this way. That's all right. <laughs> all right, that's good times. No, hey, I'm a rapist. Like... Jen? Yeah. <laughs> You're 23? Yeah. Um, What's up? My question is, I'm about two and a half months pregnant, and I'm wondering if there is, like something over the counter I can take to help my quit smoking cigarettes. Listen, it, it basically you can't take anything when you're pregnant. Right. I wouldn't even take a Tylenol. So really? I really wouldn't. Why? So, what about all those people taking all that junk over the years? Well, the evidence now suggests that uh, smoking cigarettes, the kids that were exposed to nicotine during pregnancy do less well than the kids who were exposed to crack. So oh, really? Yeah. So it, Really? Yeah. Well, actually, crack doesn't really do anything, does it? Uh, it delays them, yeah. There's some delay and stuff. But it's really, it's, it's a serious issue. So the deal is, Jen, stop smoking. You just have to stop smoking. Oh, but but hold on a second, Drew. Now, the question is, can in you... The, in, in the 50s, every other woman smoked. You're stepping on me. Hang on. Every other woman Hang on, I'm smoked. not done. That, yes, they did. And there was a lot of issues, apparently, as a result of that, both the alcohol and the tobacco. We think a lot of the mental illness and things we're seeing now may be related to that. <laughs> but the, the question is, can you use a replacement method like the nicotine patches? And that I don't know. But that would be really the only thing you could do because I still think exposing to nicotine during pregnancy, even though it's not as bad as cigarette smoke, is not a good idea. Well, what's the big difference? You're putting nicotine in your system. You put nicotine in your system. I mean, it's not constricting blood vessels and which stuff. Which is really the big issue. This that is? Yeah, it's a big issue. Well, and they have a How about you start product? dipping? <laughs> They have what? They um, I've seen them advertise. They have a new product. It's all supposed supposedly like all natural and. Jen, you can't take anything. Okay. Okay, just get that's... that out of your mind. You can take a multivitamin, pregnancy multivitamin, some iron. That's it. Right. Yeah. Don't be putting things in your system. And talk to your obstetrician about this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Nah. I, I don't know. I just think we get a little nutty with this. Yeah, I mean, maybe. it's easy to do. I mean, it's like, look, uh, we just give everybody. But it sort of reminds me of like, look, Drew, just drive 55. What's the big deal? Yeah, no, but it, I'm, it, I'm a, I got a car that goes 180. Yeah, I know. Just drive 55. It's safer. It's better. It's better. But I know this isn't exactly the same thing. I don't know if people it's, start it's slamming a, heroin. A, right. But. It's a little more like don't drive while you're intoxicated. Well, if you do, we're, we're going to get you. Yeah, I just mean... For for so many years, people drank the red wine. Are they coming around on the wine? By the way, with the pregnancy, goes back and forth. They're they're finding more and more stuff with any alcohol exposure, which I I think is not such a that may be overdone. Can we figure out the goddamn coffee and the uh, effing booze already? Co coffee's pretty much. Uh, it's all it's, just, it's pretty oh, clear. It's great. It's bad. It's yeah. kill you. It's bad. It's it's I great. Know. It's bad. It's just, let's just stick with something. Yeah. Yeah. What's I going on? I mean, everything takes so long. Well, my jeez. I just got a different report every 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm not taking any chances. I'm doubling down on the booze and the coffee. Fair enough. Ryan? Probably good with this good coffee. So, Ryan? Yeah? You're 16. Yeah. Um, What's, I don't yeah. clean my penis under the head. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm All uncircumcised. Right. Even better. Fantastic. Right. What, why are you trying to, like... I, I, you, it's, it hurts. It hurts. It's sensitive. What? It's sensitive. Yeah, it's really sensitive. Okay. Like when I'm in class, I get like a boner, and then uh, it rubs against my boxers, and it's like really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, but what does that have to do with just pulling things down and rinsing it off? Yeah, I tried that. I can only do it like about a quarter of the way. So you mm -hmm. can't get the head to come out? No, it really hurts. It hurts because mm -hmm. the skin is stretched or it's too tight? Yeah. Mm. All right, well, should that's I, a reason. Can I, can I, should I use soap or something or what? Hold on a second. Oh, my God. There's something sort of bogus about this. On I mean, the other hand, there's a, a sort of just sort of 
sort of stupidity and a sort of specific stupidity that primitive man stupidity like yeah you know shall I create a uh, yeah we'll a scare him with to? fire yeah. yeah I'm just a little nervous I'm, I that's feeling bogus again not hmm. bogus Oh, well, now you know. Well, here's the deal, Ryan. If you can't pull this foreskin down, yeah. that sometimes needs a circumcision when, they, when, that's a pro- when that happens. Really? And, yeah. And does Would your that finder, hurt? Do they give you any kind of pain when they do that? Painkillers? Ryan, just, how old are you? 16. What year were you born? 1988. No, I believe you're 16. You're a virgin, right? Yeah. Shocking. What? All right. I, I don't know. I, I I can't tell if Ryan's bogus or just sounds bogus. He sound he sounds bogus, but it may be because he's so uh, primitive. <laughs> <laughs> primitive. <laughs> just call him stupid. Uh. It's, it's it's more it's more insulting to call him primitive. All right. Here's the thing. He's got a he's got a foreskin. He's. Uh, He's got a little, uh, he's got a little gromo going underneath the right. uh, l- little cheese, yeah, underneath the turtleneck there. He needs to clean it out. Okay, here's a good start. How about you sit your, yourself in a nice uh, hot tub of water and see uh, what kind of coaxing you can get. And little, Everything expands in the heat, some, you know? So, and you use soap and some kind of lubricant would bring it out. But be that as it may, if it's so tight that he really has trouble getting it out, that, that, you got to see a urologist about that. Yeah. Because that will eventually tear and get more stenotic, more narrow. It'll be a pain. Yeah. Do you think he knows what a urologist is? Talk to your doctor, Ryan. Let him send you to the right kind of doctor. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he even has a doctor. Gloria? Yes. You yeah. could all, Ryan, you go to you go to Planned Parenthood in San Diego. They have a big Planned Parenthood. Really? Center. Yeah, huge. Hello? Gloria, you're 25. What's up? Well... I'm 25, and I grew up in, a like, the perfect beaver cleaver family. I have a dad who's really good, but when my dad would go to work, my mother would, I have two sisters. She would be abusive to me, and she'd, like, put me in the basement and tie my hands together. And she was just sadistic to me. She would tie your, you tie you up in the basement? You no the good dark. hooligan! How would she she'd t- tie your hands together and, and tie you to a chair or something? Just, yeah, sit me down there, and then I'd never tell my dad because I knew he wouldn't believe me. And then he'd come home from work, and I'd run up to him when he'd come home from work. I mean, it didn't happen every day, but it happened. Well, uh, where, did the, where does the beaver cleaver uh, scenario come I, into the picture? To everybody, I had the perfect family. Dad was home at 5 every night, church-going people. You know, for all appearances, it was the perfect family, but I suffered for it. I'm sure people must have known your mom was wacky. Excuse I'm, me. I'm, sh- I'm sure your mom went to great length to put appearances out there of perfection, oh, but I sh- I'm sure people knew she was wacky. Well, I don't understand. She would tie you up with rope in the basement? Yeah, every once in a while, just make, if I was bad or do something wrong, she'd put me in the dark down there and just tie my hands together and let me sit down there. But I think it's affected me in relationships when I'm older. Well, you, you'll, you'll pick abusive people. I pick very bad, abusive men, and the worse they are to me, I put up with it more and more. Yeah, I, I'm wondering. I mean, I know. I guess people get freaked out by their moms uh, that way. They usually you hear the dads abusive. Yeah, but my dad has never been mean to me or done anything wrong ever in my life. Here's what that means to me: is that you have the potential to resolve this and have a relationship with a nice guy. Yeah, you, you because could, you could pull that off. Uh, your mom will screw you up in general. But until this she, day, sh- she shouldn't I still try to make her like me. It's like I'll go over to the house and say, Mom, your hair looks nice. Mom, you do this nice. Mom, you well, look goodness. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Going going back to the same person and expecting a different outcome is not like her. It just right? never happens. Right. It's not who she is. And so you're now trying to find that with a, with a male. Try to have a male who you can make treat you nicely. Get, get over that. Find a nice guy like your dad. Is that what I should do? Okay. Thank yeah. you. Nope. Oh. <laughs> It's easy uh, enough. Right, why'd you were, say so? were you in a speed? Was I? Yeah. No. What were you into? When I was younger. Uh, drinking and when I was about 15 or 16, cocaine and things. I don't get addict, though, from her. Uh, I just get burnt. I just burnt, get I uh, just chewed up and spit out by life. Mm. Bad jobs, bad relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah? 
Yeah, a lot of jobs. I always quit them because I feel like I'm a failure if I start doing good at a job. And that's a, there's a mom and, thing. That's a mom. I'll, thing. Screw, I'll screw it up before I can do good at it. All right. Well, why don't you get some therapy, baby doll? Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> hey, uh, cure they're all that easy. Why don't you uh, cure yourself of cancer? All righty, go. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Catch you later. You guys are greatest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good times. I, I I don't know about... I, I'm always amazed at these uh, parents. Well, what you know, first off, the world's greatest dad. The world's greatest dad doesn't marry the world's worst mom. No, that's, that's right. That's number one. That's right. And two, I, how does a kid never convey this to, to the, the dad, dad. Yeah, yeah. and how come the dad never picks up on why, why does he mom why does the family have to have such severe yeah. secrets secrets where nobody could express themselves here's my way. question too is it ever that polar is the, mom ever is that horrible healthy. and dad that great no 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 I, no I guarantee that's a little meets it's a little closer to the mason dixon line yeah yeah all right we'll take ourselves a little break we'll be right back after this Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. We're going to speak to uh, Stephanie, who's 19. When she cuddles with boyfriend after fighting, she gets real excited. Yeah. All right. That sounds exciting. Stephanie? Yeah. You Hi. uh yeah. Ooh. What's up? Hi. Well, my boyfriend and I get in fights. Um I don't know. We will we almost I mean, we always make up. And it's afterwards when we're laying in bed and we're cuddling and we're really close to each other and I just get really excited. Like and like in like a, a horny way, I get really horny, and it's it's strange because when we just normally go to, to have horny, sex, had to say horny twice. Huh? Sorry, horny <laughs> I'm really horny. Horny way sounds like it's just a great cul-de-sac to live on. <laughs> you uh, take yeah, you take Strumpet Road, uh, you'll hit Horny Circle, and then Horny Way. That's the next, and then we're right there. We're second house on the left. You can't miss it. What uh, what kind of fighting do you guys do? Is there uh, do you hit each hand other? to hand? They use oh, throwing no, stars, not, no. nunchucks, or anything. No, yeah. we don't hit each other. I mean, it's I mean they're always verbal, you know. Right. And well, listen, you're 19. This is what you do. You get all fired up. You get the juices flowing. But it's, and you cuddle. You the, get horny. The aggression is what's being converted into sexual. Uh -oh. We ever physically abused? No. 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 Okay. No, no well, problems. Huh? Mm -hmm. No problems growing up with this? I mean, I was molested once, but it wasn't my any family members or anything. And Who did it? Um, a friend of mine. How old were you? Uh, it was actually over the summer. You got molested last summer? Yeah. Oh. That wouldn't be molested. That's I raped. That's raped. Well, I mean, there was no... Penetration? Penetration. Hmm? No, and of course, what was sexual what, assault what, then? What was there? Well, um, you know, it was a guy I thought I could trust, sure. and um, I could not drive because I was intoxicated, and I passed out at his house, mm -hmm. and um, well, I woke up with his hands down my pants, basically. Right. And, and he what? was touching me. And then what? Um. I told him to get off of me, but I couldn't leave, and so he actually, he didn't say anything. He just got up and, like, went into his room, and he didn't come out, and I left as soon as I woke up in the morning. A rapist. <laughs> All right, so sort All of, right. In, you know, inappropriate sexual contact. Yeah, that, but, that, that shouldn't leave too big a mark. No. No, yeah, That's but... It's not molestation. Molestation is when you're pre-pubertal, like your child. Hmm? Okay. Oh uh, so, Stephanie, that's the only thing that happened. Uh, you got a little trauma there. Somebody stepped out of line. You caught it. You stopped it. I wonder how much of that stuff, by the way, like, you know you know what these guys do, I would imagine. These guys that try this kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's, the chick's passed out. Yeah. So you take your hand and you start rubbing down there. It doesn't, re it doesn't really wake anybody up. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, it probably feels good. 
Yeah, but again, that's a guy t- uh, wishing somebody would do that to him. No, I, I, I know. But what I'm saying is, is I think what happens is the guys test the water a little by doing the little out of the uh, outside the panties, uh, outside the pants rub right. for five minutes. Don't get much of a response. Then the hand slides in. Then they wake up. Right, right. And I don't even know. It, you know, it's sort of like the uh, guy giving the other guy the BJ. The guy's drunk. The guy's passed out. He's having a dream. Uh, one of the Hee Haw twins is giving him a little pleasure and then wakes up and sees the guy with the goatee and freaks. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Drew, that's happened to you, yes? Wait, having a flashback. Yeah. I mean, not the goatee back then. He had that big Dan uh, Haggerty beard. Yes? Big Merlin Olsen beard. But, uh, but yeah. the point is, the point is, is I kind of think that when these guys do this, they think like, oh, all right, I'm just going to rub for a little bit. Uh, it seems like she uh, she's yeah. okay with it. Either she's not waking up or it's like you're in that state where you're just kind of passed out. It's like so if someone was doing something that felt kind of good right. and you're drunk and high and whatever and passed out, you don't even know it's like right. you'll hang for it, right? Right, right, right. All right. Uh, that shouldn't count. I mean, that shouldn't be... What this guy did was wrong, but she shouldn't be traumatized from that. Yeah, still something up with Stephanie. She likes the uh, aggressive you know, yeah. makeup sex. Yeah, I'm not going to get to it. Yeah. Wendy? Yeah? You're 25? Yep. Sorry for uh, disturbing you at uh, this no, time. You're... At night, at your <laughs> I didn't home. know. Sorry. Uh-oh. What was that? <laughs> That's my kid. All righty. Uh, you got a fiancé? Yep. And uh, you're cheating on him? Yeah, for the past, like, four months. Mm-hmm. When are you guys planning on getting married? Uh, it's kind of been up in the air, sort of, whenever. Uh, who you... <laughs> who you... Wow. That's like a, uh, that's like a recorded Novelty, drop yeah. of a baby cry. Uh, it was Anderson. Oh, okay. well, that's why it sounded like a recorded drop of a baby <laughs> <laughs> Wendy? Yeah. Wendy, uh, is your boyfriend or fiance sort of not attending to you lately, or is he, are you mad at him for um, something? Probably like the past year. Um, What's the deal? He gets really absorbed in like computer video games. Doesn't really help around with um, our child. And so you're you're going to show around him? The house. Huh? This is what women do. This well, is, payback time. You're going to show him. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, but I know it's wrong. It's like, why do I do it? Well, who are you doing because, it with? Somebody, somebody you work with? Uh, a, f- a friend of mine's roommate. Uh huh. And uh, is, how, that, is that a guy? Uh, he's twenty-seven. How often do you do this? Uh, I see him like twice a week. Twice a week. Wow. Yeah. Ambitious. And uh, for uh, for how long? How long has this been going four on? Months. About four uh, months. Sometimes, sometimes I stay over there. Sometimes. A couple Damn. hours. How do you stay we don't over? really have sex. We just—it's like we hang out and. Yeah, well, I don't know. Wait maybe a it's more emotional. What? Do you have sex with him at all? Do I? Have, yeah. Yes, I have. Just not every time. No. Yeah. Uh, and how do you? How is it that you stay over? What's? Uh, do you live with your boyfriend? Yeah. Um, well, since it's a roommate of a friend, it's pretty easy to. Uh, it's easy to say I'm spending over the, the night over the night over at Jill's house or what, what exactly you, exactly really that's kind of weird too your boyfriend's not like uh, your fiance hey, where, hey what uh, do you mean you're you got an eight yeah, month old that's, gone? And that's weird too he doesn't call me when I'm gone is he a drug addict it's a drug addict uh no he doesn't smoke know. pot every day no no well look okay here's the thing he's uh he's he what I said he's pretty straight and narrow, actually. He he. Okay, he's depressed. Something, yeah. yeah. Something is really, really up wrong. With him. I, really I would wrong. say he's just depressed. And you sound marginally depressed uh, yourself. Not sure. as bad as him. He's sort of immobilized. Something like, is something is very e- e- yeah very uh, wrong. Okay, so I, what you guys need. I do? All right, you need. I. Does he go to school? Well, first off, uh, yeah, I do. We both do actually, and both work, and then we have our two-year-old. And well, does the school have mental health services? You know, I've tried to get him to go to therapy with me, and he just he refuses. He just doesn't think that. No. Well, well, here's the deal: You're, the relationship break can't it last. Off. Yeah, you got to break, break it, it off, off if he won't participate. Yeah, what and uh, and listen, listen. Well, he's not being a father such as it is. So listen, mommy. And the, yeah. the chaos what are you is no doing? good for What are you kid? doing sleeping over at a friend's house? You got well, a eight two year old. old. Or, or, two? I said eight months, oh. but she said two. Oh. So let's yeah, call it fourteen. Perfect. 
the point is, is you're just you're just crashing out at uh, some friend's house, some friend's apartment. You're flopping on a futon. You got a kid at home. You're going to school and working. Who's with the kid? What? Let me tell you something, Drew. As I've told you many times, when you tell me uh, you're going to take three million dollars to put each one of your kids through a college, I keep telling you there's huge uh, swings in parenting. Yeah, there's and it's it's sort of like. There's the uh, guys who own the dogs that uh, take them to the dog park and throw the Frisbee uh, every day and uh, knit them a sweater and uh, get them a present for Easter. Give them like a, uh, a, a giblets Easter bunny. And then the ones that just, they put them in the backyard and they just, they shut the back door and that's it. It seems like there's some that put an electric prod in the cage too. This, yeah, there's, uh, there's those too. But I mean, there's just the ones that just say, hey, just, yeah. you know, Wendy, I'm gonna raise them. You've got to do some parenting. And the book I'm going to recommend to you is called Parenting from the Inside Out by a guy named Siegel. And the time you don't spend with your kid, your kid needs at least a third of your day in your presence. And yeah. it is critical to the child's brain yeah. development. I hope it's a chick. should be a stripper. Right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. <laughs> 1-800-LOVE-191 right Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191 It's been exquisitely hot. Mm. And um, it's getting on my nerves. I'm on my last yeah. nerve with this heat. And it's another one of these things, by the way. I know I like to blame everything on the weatherman, but uh, uh, the point is, is um, here's uh, about how good that five-day forecast is. Oh. It, uh, the week before, it was basically raining, <laughs> blustery and cold. Uh, three days later, maybe two days later, uh, we were setting heat records. Uh, what? Any uh, any heads up on that? No, there was a little bit of a heads up. A little? Yeah, but really? then, then they expect the pr predicted rain again three days later. That was uh, ten days ago. I didn't get any uh, heat. Uh, I didn't get any heat record uh, heads up. Uh, not sun that I needed. Sunday, it. yeah, Sunday. I, I the over last weekend they went. You're not going to believe the heat this weekend. And I thought, yeah, I, I just completely dismissed it. And pow. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's crazy hot. Corolla. It's, yeah, I'm like you. I really hate the heat. But now working on the show, when it gets hot, I, I mean, I can take the sweating, but I, I get really upset about having to come to work because I know that it's going to come up eventually with you. Just listening to Adam upsets you. It's not actually tolerating Exactly. I'm like, oh, God, it's hot today. I know what that means. Oh, yeah. 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 You're going to hear about it. Well, to be fair to me, it's been hot the last three days. I haven't brought anything up. But I thought it was some sort of fluke. That it would Some break. sort of flash in the pan. Yeah. Like, what's it still? Why is it still hot? Yeah. I was surprised when they said that, uh, when they did that thing, and they went, like, it's usually, usual, they do that average temperature or whatever. It was like 65. Well, it was 88 or something today, or 90. It was like 93 downtown, which, uh, for no. those of you, well, that was yesterday, I think, or the uh. day before. But the point is, is that for those of you who don't know the area, in the doggiest days of summer on the, uh, on the west side, it rarely gets past 90. Yeah. And, you know, downtown is always, you know, if it's 93 downtown, it's usually, you know, 118 in, uh, <laughs> in the valley. Yes. It's good times, yeah. Thank God I worked in a uh, concrete bunker over there for many years. Ryan? Hello, how's it going? 24, good. What's up? Yes. Um, okay, I recently started therapy because um, I just, I don't know, I kind of felt lost, and I'm a, well, I mean, I'm a virgin to, to get it off Bag it better run. You're 24. True, please. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, well, the therapist and I were talking, and it turns out that there were a bunch of things as I was growing up that I sort of remember that I was telling him about, and he said that those weren't normal. They weren't, you know, they weren't healthy ways, mostly involving my father and I. Like um, what? To bring, like... Like, uh, we would take showers together past Oop. an appropriate age. Yep. And, and like, um, I think I think he held my penis once. Well, not once, but, you know, during, like, I don't know. What, during, what, you know, what age um, did you have the showers? Um, 
Well, I like seven, eight, up to there. So what do you think, what do you suspect your dad was doing? I mean, was he just uh, being negligent, or is he some sort of quasi-pedophile who just never could squeeze a trigger on his own son's ass, or what is I, it? I don't, I don't really know. You see, just poor boundaries. I was, my, I was telling my therapist about all this stuff, and he said, you know, that's inappropriate, that wasn't good, and I think that there might be more. And I was like, you know, I don't know, you know, what you're doing with that, and he... He, he thinks there might be more. There's you got to be more where the smoke that's, is fire. Well, that's what he said. Yeah. But, well, but I mean, but but hold hold on a second, Ryan uh -huh. and and Drew, because some guys are just bad. They have bad boundaries, bad decisions, and bad yeah, whatever. And, and the mo and the more may not be overt abuse, but there's going to be more, oh, yeah, more to be revealed yeah. about this weird guy that's I, doing I, these weird I'm, things. I'm, I'm sure of it, but it seemed like, look, if he's into you sexually, he does something. Oh yeah, I'm not. I, I'm, not, I'm actually. Dad. I'm actually not getting sexual abuse. I'm getting okay. more like bipolar, right. alcoholic what stuff. Else? Just where he's just, you know, Any, just messed up. Well, I thought Ryan was going to get at something physical. Um. Well. There was this one time that, um, I mean, we were both showering together, and um, he had me... Penis in the mouth. I, well, I... Hold on. Do you think this is bogus? No, no. No? No, no, no. Thank God the Corollas didn't have showers. This is going to be if he put we the penis tubs. somewhere. Yeah, yeah he put his penis... What did he do? Well, I don't, I don't think he did anything like that. He... He was. He told me he had to to soap my back, and then he mason jar had me um, <laughs> mason jar turned around mason and jar. Said, mason jar. Oh please, let you him son go. of a bitch! You got uh, mason jar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you? I I said it was bogus. Yeah. You're right. All right, Ryan. Oh, it was a nice man, try. That's a bummer. Almost. All almost right. got you it. almost. You almost got there. It's just. You I was, started I it. You, he, I didn't pull the trigger. Right. You built a little too slow. Like let, let me. Was, but that was a good idea to build slowly, but you didn't have a proper payoff. Drew, you let stepped me, all over Ryan, man. Let me explain. <laughs> uh, let me explain what happened there, Ryan. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Ryan. Go ahead. Over here, buddy. You, yeah, here's what it is. Here's this. You had a plane, and you used up too much runway. <laughs> you were on a carrier. You didn't know you were on a carrier deck. And you just, you didn't pull back on the yoke. You had enough ground speed. You just, you never pulled back. You went into the ocean. Yeah. You got cocky. You tried to use up, you, you just, you used up too much deck. Yeah. We were right with him. Although, it, I hate to give myself credit because no, you, you know you, how difficult that is yeah, for me, Drew. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, there was a boat, some, it started to smell bogus to me to a certain, a yeah. certain point. Yeah. All right. Yep. True. All right, true. Well, listen, uh, nice try there, Ryan. Uh, the virgin part was a nice... Yeah, yeah, it was all fitting for nice me. Nice angle. The virgin... We might not be that far from virgin, though, with <laughs> Ryan. Oh, how... I have two things to say to that, Adam. How dare you? How dare you? And how dare you, sir? He is a virgin. He is a virgin. You're gay. Yeah. All right, there's, there's, there's got to be elements of that there. Actually, probably not even 24. Hmm? Really? And I, I'm going with the 24 part, Ryan. Oh, I think he hung up. All right. it's, it's it's a bad sign that we bust people for bogus calls and then talk to them <laughs> when they hang up on us. <laughs> think about how desperate Our that self -esteem. is. Self-esteem. Giovanni. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Okay, I'm gay, and my boy. He's okay. This is my first boyfriend. My That's first serious nice. relationship. Mm -hmm. And he left for Maryland um, about a week ago. And before he left, we were together for about two and a half months. Hold on. He, hello? Balti Baltimore, Maryland? I don't know. Somewhere okay. in Maryland. He, he didn't give me like the exact um, destination. Because right. he worked for a cruise line. Uh -huh. and so I'm like, I'm all for it because it's a good job. But sure. we were together for two months before he left. And I asked him before I left, I was like, well, what do you do on the boat? He goes, and he was like, well, there are guys, and yes, we do have sex. And I was like, so basically you're telling me you're, you have sex while you're gone. And he was like, yeah. And then he told me that he would, he is most likely going to have um, sex while he's gone, but he doesn't want me to. How old is this guy? He's 19. He's 18 also. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, what's his nationality? 
he's he's white. Really? Yeah. He's not even Italian or anything. No, I'm Italian. Oh, really, Giovanni? Yeah. Can't believe you're putting up with this crap. Well, because I love him, and he's like my first serious thing. Yeah, well, he's abusive and yeah. he's, uh, he's an oh, no, a-hole. He's, no, he's not abusive at all. We have a very this, this is abusive, Giovanni. This is an abusive situation. He's being abusive towards you. He's telling you he's going to cheat and that you have to just suck it up and take but it. See, what he told me is he doesn't see it as cheating. Cheating in his eyes is sleeping with someone and then having feelings for him. He well, what, what, however, he, you know, uh-huh. let's yeah. thank you. Wait, Adam, wait, hold on a second, Giovanni. That'd be great. Hold on. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Why, why don't we try that with our wives? He should represent himself in court, by the perfect. way, if he ever gets busted for murder. For anything. I don't consider I, that murder. Your Honor, no, this is not murder. This is me taking a life. I didn't kill somebody. I think you and I have to try this cheating thing with our wives. Like, honey, I, I don't consider this cheating, what? so you just... Yeah, just... let me explain what I consider cheating. <laughs> right. I, first, I have to have an orgasm, and that orgasm has to make contact with at least three women. It's, it's, it's got to be three. It's got to right. be that's at least where, that's three. Where, that's where my cheating... On, on route. And it came... Simultaneously. Well, someone's going to get hit first, uh, yeah, but of it, it's all during the same cell, though. Right, right, right. And uh, there can be no, uh, no gifts exchanged. There can be no love. If it's just... Purely a debaucherous sexual adventure with multiple partners. I don't consider that cheating. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah. And let's see if we return with our testicles. Right. Giovanni. Yeah. Okay. That's terribly. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't enter with your testicles, though. You got <laughs> terribly. Be fair to your wife. Terribly abusive, Giovanni. Really horrible. Uh, he's a bad guy. Look. First off, let me explain something. Okay. Everyone who works on cruise ships is evil. The the all of them. <laughs> but. The, the, Purser, skipper, the lower you go down, the more evil they are. The waiters, it's which is it's it's which one big floating sexual petri dish with just uh, screwball nationalities from all over the world just banging the bejesus out of each other and out 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 of the uh, people in steerage. And how about the uh, people that come on board? They're horrible too. No, no, but I mean these. They, they bang them. Yeah. They bang. Every, that's what I'm saying. The the the, the, the people in steerage. Oh, they, I see. They, what does that they, mean? They're down at the bottom. Uh, I mean, the, the, the passengers in steerage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're the people in steerage. I, I think right. about people in steerage being the, the, the staff. That's where oh. they stay. Okay. They bang the bejesus out of everybody. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they're horrible. Okay, well. Okay. Giovanni, I, you need to break up on this guy. Yeah. His, uh, his ship has sailed, and so is yours. And not to say that he wouldn't like to be in a relationship with you or doesn't have feelings for you or wasn't wish that you would just wait by for him. He has shown his true colors. He is a very bad guy. There you go. Well, okay. you Why are you gay? Did someone sexually abuse you? Oh, no. No, no, no. Um, I've never really been turned on by women. I've yeah. always known I was different. All right. I've always it- known I liked men. All right, and uh, everything cool. Uh, who who screwed you up? What do you mean who screwed? I was Where'd... foster care for twelve and a half years. Okay, foster that... care. Half... Yeah. Oh. And so that was like a really big. Any sexual? Me. Any sexual abuse? No, there was a lot of sexual activity though. That, yeah, well, that's sexual, sexual activity abuse. at age eight is uh, sexual, sexual abuse, of course. Oh well, no, it didn't start at age eight. I started being sexually active when I was ten. That, oh. That's sexual it abuse. Older, it was with everyone my age. That's sexual abuse, Giovanni. It's, with someone it's, my age. It, that is sexual. It's not abuse. as not as bad as uh, old hairy Uncle Lou having at you, but it's it's, it's it's still not a great thing. Child on child sexual abuse is very common. Okay, so so here's the point. Giovanni is uh, was in foster care for like twelve years. We, that's a disaster. We didn't find out why he was in foster care. His no. mom couldn't pronounce his name, uh, and so. Uh, 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 the city took him away. They, they became, dad became a Formula One racer. Giovanni? Yeah? Why were you in foster care? Because um, someone in my neighborhood made allegations that I was being babysat by an unfit babysitter who was a druggie, and mm-hmm. which she was, and my mom didn't know. And so I was taken away in the middle of the day while my mom was, was at work. I and um, then the state found out that she was in alco- into alcohol and Your mom? other crap. Yeah, my mom. Yeah. And how about your dad? Where was he? Um, I don't know my dad. Formula One race. That's a circuit. Yeah. yeah. All right, Giovanni. Yeah. Listen to me, because I'm a uh, Gia genius. <laughs> all right? You've had a horrible childhood. And, the fo- and I know you sort, of, you sort of gloss over it. Well, your mom is at work one day. Somebody made some allegations, and they came no, and snatched no, you up. No, that never happens unless the, the, the misconduct is profound, Giovanni. Profound. Yes, your mother was horribly unfit. Yes. And your dad abandoned the family. 
and you were abused in in oh. every 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 way you can define abuse. Why right? was the one so. night stand? What I, I, I can see that of a one night stand. Okay, listen. whatever. You, it's a bad situation. Yeah, you 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 would have been better off just being squeezed out of a bar rag. So everything's horrible. Now you're 18. Mm -hmm. You're with a guy's taking advantage of you because your self esteem is effed up because all the horrible. This this is really the saddest. It's the saddest part of life to me, which is. The people that grow up and they get nourished emotionally and they have people tell them they're, they're pretty or they're handsome or they're smart or they're whatever they are and they can achieve anything, they go on and just have a life that just where, where, where the seas part for them. You know, they just everything, the, the signals all turn green mm -hmm. as they go down the highway, everything good. And then the people that get the uh, emotional abuse, the sexual abuse, the verbal abuse, the foster care and all this, they get hooked up with people that just step on them. I over want and over someone and over to again. Tell me. Yes, I want someone to tell me why the human must recreate over and again the most horrible things that happen to them in life. What I, is that? I, I don't know, but if you, it's just like, it, I would be fine if somebody was raised in a mansion, had butlers and servants and two loving parents, and uh, had, had the uh, life of Riley until age 20, and then got into a couple of bad jobs and a couple of bad relationships for a run after that. Uh, it doesn't work that way, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's sort of crap on crap mixed in with just a little bit of crap sprinkles <laughs> that guys like Giovanni have the horrible, abusive childhoods and then just go on to get abused by some... Uh, uh, but they make sure of it. The, pe right. the kids who are abused make sure they have abusive people in their life the, from then on. Yes. This, by the way, is the real damage that's done uh, from the abusive yes, parents. Yes, of course. Because the other stuff is, well, okay, so you get abused, but it, but it ends. Yeah. This is the legacy. Yeah. Giovanni, get some therapy. All right. Alexis? Yeah? You're 20? Uh, yeah. What's up? Hi. How are hey. you? Good. Um, I throw too much pot, I think. And uh, I know that you guys are in L.A. and I'm in L.A. And I wanted to know if Dr. Drew or maybe you, Adam, had any numbers or any groups or something that I should be in. And, like, I don't really think, I, I mean, I like smoking, but I just don't think it's helping anything. Do you know what I'm saying? Or no, yeah. not at all. Well, you're ready to quit. I mean, yeah, I think, I think that, like, I'm just, is that, is that the only question? And then, how long, well, how long have you been smoking pot? Like, every day for a while. Since like probably like eleventh grade when we had our own mm. cars and stuff like that. True. What do you hear about? Uh, and you know, you don't hear about women, especially young women, getting so tied up so fast, like wanting to quit. Oh, they don't oh. call this show and talk about quitting. Um, guys talk about quitting. Yeah, guys get I busted. I like girls, so maybe that's weird too. Oh, Daiko. <laughs> well, maybe that maybe that's what it is. <laughs> now, when you're diking off, you're the guy, then, right? Not. I mean, like. No, I have, like, relationship issues and, like, don't really... Like, I have, I don't have any real relationships. It's just, like... All right. You're a lesbian. Yeah. True, please. Maybe well, she's I'm, a little depressed, too. Well, of course yeah, not. Oh, yeah, I'm on, like, pills and, yeah, all sorts all right. of... Yeah, I'm depressed, and I don't think the pot really is helping that because I, I know that when I'm going to try to get off it, it's just going to become more depressed and I'm going to need it and blah, blah, blah. And so I was thinking yeah. that, like, maybe other people kind of go through stuff like that, too, and I should be hanging with them more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that sounds like a good plan. All right, so Alexis. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm sorry. All right, this is very common. Yeah. And you need to go to MA. There's okay. thousands of people in MA with exactly your story, and it's a common deal, and thank God you're getting to it a little earlier than most before you either graduate yeah. to something else. But, I, I mean, like, yeah, that was the other thing. that Like, I started kind of just messing around with other stuff, but, Speed. like, I don't really... No, like, I, well, Coke, a little bit. But, like, I, I wasn't really into it. I don't really like it. Thank God, I guess. But Yeah. All right. M.A. you, you got to go to 12-step. There's, there's no other way, unfortunately. And you can talk to the doctors prescribing the medication. Maybe they'll have to adjust that. And certainly you need to be monitored in that first six months after you stop smoking pot. Because as you, as you discovered, your mood will get horribly depressed during that period of time. Yeah. But this, marijuana addiction accounts for most, probably the single most common drug of, well... And one of the most single most common drugs of addiction we're dealing with right now. It's very common. It's back so common now, it's the only dedicated drug group that at my hospital we're having to come up with a second night. 
In other words, we have an NA group, an AA group. The MA, the marijuana, is so populated, we're mm -hmm. having to come up with another night, have it on two different nights. Isn't it just because they're fatter and take up more room? No, no. Well, they have to put more stuff in the room, more food, and, you know. More shiny more, stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, hey, a is it because of the potency of marijuana? That, and it's, a, you know, it's an addictive drug for some people. I know, but, I mean... Here's the thing. Well, here's like, the thing. Back in the day, it was just a bunch of shake and leaves and stuff. I mean, you smoke five joints, you right. barely cop a buzz. The buzz you were getting was from depleting your brain of oxygen. You know, you're right. hyperventilating. It, now it, stuff is crazy. Right. It's the equivalent of the OxyContin of marijuana. We have a more addictive chemical being getting exposed to, so people get addicted more quickly. But more importantly, it just sort of... There's this delusional cultural reinforcement of pot's a good thing, it's healthy for you, everyone should be smoking, and the people get strung out on it. And it never happened. It can't be. Yeah, pot's not addictive. Don't you know pot's not addictive? Well, what do these poor people do? Get addicted. Yeah, lots of them. Lots of them. Also, pot is a, uh, it's a, it's a drug that you can sort of be quasi-functional on for, for long while, periods yeah. of time. Yeah. And you're just quite, you're not quite at your, you're not at the top of your game, but no one's really going to accuse you. Like when you're drunk, you're drunk, you know, you get pulled over, you get right. busted, you lose your job, you smell of booze, you know, right. all this stuff. Pot, I know guys who just get, they can get stoned in the morning and go to work yes. and eh, they'll, and then, they do pretty good work. But then usually there's a slow decay in their abilities and the, no one sees it, it's least of all the patient, the person who's doing it. They don't see the effect. Right. They don't believe it. Brian? Yeah. You're 17? Totally. All right, buddy. Well, this can be Germany or Florida? Oh, yeah. I was Bring really it on. Psyched out. Yeah, I was talking to Adam and all. Yeah, uh, okay, it's exciting. Good. I admit. Whatever. Oh, that's not cool. We shouldn't play that whatever thing. That hurts me. All right, okay, here we go. Yeah, whatever. I think that was, that was more dig at me, Brian. Oh, all right. Uh, that's all right. Fun. Go ahead. So these three guys are out golfing, and they're a little wasted. And so one of them decides to be funny if they put their nads in the ball washer. And while he's doing that, one of the friends clamps it down and turns it on. And, you know, the guy's nads are in there. So the guy passes out, and he falls off. And when he does that, his, actually, his nads rip off. And so this guy's sterile for the rest of his life. Yeah. Liar! Liar! Yeah. Whore! Liar! Whore! You know it! it sounds like the, one of the... The ball washer is a hand-operated thing. You don't flip on the power. Okay. And, uh, and, and, have, and it's high. You'd have, how would you, how do you get up there to get your nuts? Uh, in I've I could I, I've got my nuts iron. in there before. He what? He was balancing with a nine iron, and he had two other guys with him. He was balancing with a nine iron. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay, is this well, bogus? It, it just sounds like urban legend. It's not. Okay. It's nothing. All right. We refuse to think of this as a uh, actual event that uh, actually occurred, Brian. It was in the Darwin Awards. No. All right. Well, I'm going Florida anyway. Florida. Hey, you guys decided? Yeah. Right, Florida? That's right. It was Florida. There we go. <laughs> you always know we're right when uh, when they do that. Uh, okay, final answer. Yeah, Florida. All right, so you're going. You guys are set. <laughs> set on the, the Sunshine State then, huh? Yeah, we're going Florida. Okay, because then the answer, yeah, it's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> It's no fair trying to talk us out of our answer. Right. Yeah, we got you. All right. I, I don't think they allow uh, golf in Germany, by the way. Mm. And uh, number two, electric ball washer. I, 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 yeah. Drew, Drew is the only doctor um, on the planet who's never actually shot a round of golf. That's true. Yeah. And, and, and Drew, you always say, you always say, I don't have time for golf. I, I understand. What do you do? Yeah. That's that. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's, what, here's, what, here's what golf is for. It forces guys, like these sort of captain of industry guys or these attorneys or these doctors especially, it forces guys with crazy schedules to stop doing stuff for like four hours and go stand around somewhere. Because, see, otherwise they couldn't do it. But then it becomes addictive, and then they uh, get into it. Uh, and then, 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 then they start talking about it all the uh, time, and then they become a-holes. <laughs> but uh, initially, the impulse is good. Yeah, yeah. See, Drew, you need to stop. And the problem is you can't stop because you always you got your phone by you. Always you do. I got to work out. I got you mm -hmm. know. So all, all this thing it, it forces you to stop. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to stop. All right. I'm gonna keep smoking pot. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Dude, you got issues. Call Love Line one eight hundred Love one nine one.
Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Will Sasso will be in here. He will be in here uh, tomorrow night. He's from uh, Less Than Perfect, and uh, you know him from Mad TV. He's the guy with the huge head. Mm. Not fat head. Big head. Hmm. Buddha head. Big, funny guy. So, uh, be good to see you tomorrow night. Will Arnett will be in here from uh, Arrested Development. And then uh, Titus, Chris Titus coming in here. And uh, Chris uh, Pontius is coming in here from uh, Jackass, Cypress Hill. Benji from uh, Good Charlotte coming in. Bert McCracken from The Used. Oh, Bert. Hmm. That was uh, Kelly's boyfriend. Yep. Mm-mm. Broke her heart. Hmm. We got a score to settle with that bird. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, get into that in the next uh, days and weeks. Wait a minute. I screwed that up. So I want to talk to Jennifer. Yes. Well, hang on a second, Jennifer. Remember, we want to talk about the threesome thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. What happened to the threesome, kitties? I was saying to Drew, we haven't, really, we haven't had a threesome call in like five years. It's been a while. Aren't you guys getting it on together anymore? Seems what? like that the whole preoccupation with that has passed. What's up? Are you guys uptight? <laughs> They're not cool. That's look. Only reason I come into work every night is because I think I'm going to hear a threesome <laughs> question. I love a threesome question. It's just not coming anymore. There were all the rage about six years ago. Everyone was yeah. having a threesome. Even up to four years ago, I'd say. Is threesome? Has it become passe? So it's not worth talking about, or are people not engaging in as many threesomes? And if not, why? What's happening? How, how, how do we get out of that? Maybe everyone checked that box on their oh, sort of when things to do list. Well, well, look at it this way. If you had that threesome, 18, 19 years old, now you're 24. It's like, been there, done that. Mm. Yeah. You know, young guys are, though. They, they get a taste of something. They're like, uh, you know, lions having eaten. Yeah. yeah. On the kill, yeah. Yeah. Taste of blood. Jennifer? Yes? You're 18? Yes. Um, I was going to say, th- Adam, I love yeah. you. <laughs> I love you, I think, too. I think that you're one of the smartest, funniest people in entertainment. <laughs> well, that's that's true. But, <laughs> you know, you got to think of what the competition is. You know what I mean? I know. So it's easy for him to be the smartest, funniest. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And that's okay. not because not I like myself. Yeah. I love myself, oh, man. Oh, really? <laughs> going to do it when I get home. Nice. Have you had a threesome lately, Jennifer? Lately? I don't Ever? know that. <laughs> Ever? Um, uh, I guess only a three-way kiss. That doesn't really count, but... Is that two chicks and a dude? No, two chicks. Oh, and you. Yeah. Nice. Once in a while you see that two dudes and a chick three-way kiss, and that always gets a little weird for me. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's better with three girls. But. Yeah. Okay. Did you do that so some guys could watch, or is that just for you guys? Um, I don't know. Both. <laughs> All right. All right. What's your question? Yeah. That's um, because the dudes Well, watch. since I've been both. young, since I can probably like seven, six, um... I've, you know, masturbated, and I've also had a sexual experience with another girl at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's I'm not like attracted to girls at all, really. Uh-huh. Like sexually, I wouldn't want anything sexually. But mm-hmm. like when I have sex with guys, I can orgasm, but I have to be like on top and like in control, and I can't mm-hmm. get off during like oral sex or anything like that. Yeah. So I I don't know if it's um, related to that, like, because I, no. you know, no. masturbate regularly, and for me, that's the only way during, like, with another person. I, I will, what does that I, mean? I thought you had an orgasm when you got on top. I, I do, but it's, that's the only way. Like, I can't, like, if a guy, because a lot of guys don't like when a girl's on top, or guys I've been with. Really? Like, See, only, most guys are like that. They, the guys are lazy. And so yeah. the fact that you can do that, you're way ahead of average. The fact that you can have an orgasm during intercourse. They kick these guys right in the sack. Yeah. What? Well, I know I've been complaining because I can have an orgasm. It's just, like, it's really frustrating. Like, during oral sex, like, I have to fake it because I feel bad sometimes, you know? No, you uh, listen, Jennifer, just oh. speak your mind about you're what you like. breaking my heart, sweet yeah. cheeks. This, I the, can only have an orgasm on top. Well, guys are, you know... 
Guys are lazy. Know, like, guys, are, guys, I, pref- just you're fine. Find a guy, fine. tell him what you like, what you're going to do, and that's yeah. that. He'll be fine. He'll All be right. Fine. You said what? I should experiment with girls. I mean, I. I mean. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what Drew said. Drew said, "Go find yourself a broad and bury your face in her vagina." No, I'm just wondering because when I was younger, I could orgasm with a girl. How old were you? Uh, like eight to ten. Dude, how old was the girl? My age. She was one of my friends. Yeesh. All right. There sounds like um, sounds like you, you didn't grow up in the the greatest of environments, Jennifer. No, I, I did. I you did? Um, had two parents, like no sexual abuse or anything. Mm. Except for the eight-year-old, yeah, that that, was, that's uh, sexual abuse that counts as something. Not as bad as uh, the old guy, but uh, still but it was like our something. own, like we knew what we were doing, sort of. All right. thing. Hey, you were, Jennifer, you were eight. Were you having orgasms? Yeah, yeah. How I didn't know. I mean, it just felt like electric shock or something. Oh, well, uh, I just knew. I mean, you can tell what an orgasm is. You know, it's mm. not that hard. Really? How did you know what? Wish how chick did you I was with could tell what one was like? How do you? Did you even know that those kinds of things happened? Uh. Well, I she don't felt know, the, really. Felt the I, feeling. I, I knew about sex, and I was how, how did you very know about curious. It? How did you know about it? Hold on a second. Wait, I'm just curious what she was exposed to. kid knows. No, no, what she was exposed uh, uh. How did you know about it? Uh, I was watching, I used to, like, watch, like, fuzzy porn, like, on the channel that I could. But that okay. fuzzy porn? I mean, you, yeah, you mean scrambled porn? Come, yeah, like, it wouldn't come, it would come in, but, like, not really. I remember I, like, yeah. saw that when I was, like, eight, and I was, like, it, like, made me, like, excited, I guess. All right. All right. First off, let me tell you, that, that uh, scrambled porn, you think you're looking at some boob and you're looking at the back of some guy's sack. <laughs> you know, it can really be tough. Be traumatizing. It can be traumatizing when you're like, oh, yeah. Ah, uh, no. Uh, that's what it's like. Uh, let me say, they got to put that, they gotta put that uh, cone, that Caltrans orange cone at the uh, porn shop uh, as you start to, uh, as you start to veer into the gay porn <laughs> section. they got to put something up. Put a velvet rope up or partition or something. A curtain. Nothing worse than that, uh, you know, because I always walk. I just slide along. I do a little side shuffle, huh. you know. I step. Here's what I do. I, I move right to, I move, I move out. Uh, I move left to right. I kick out my right foot about three feet, and I slide my other one over. I make up the ground like an inchworm, you know, and I keep yeah. moving. But it's always that, eh, ooh, where's the big jug still? Eh, nice. Ooh, black on black. I like. Oh, what do we got, a little threesome? How's that, how's that dude's got two? Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! And you can't get it out of your head. <laughs> You can't. You could. Uh, you hit your eyes with a seltzer bottle, <laughs> and it wouldn't erase those it's, memories. It's like kicking a big swig on sour milk, huh? When yeah, you're expecting and swallowing. And yeah, you're expecting. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know what's up with Jennifer. I, I know Drew's got some ideas. I, she, okay, well, let, let's let's try to agree on this. Um, she's she's a sexual person. Yes, yes. I know it sounds like a cop out, but her motor runs a yes. little faster yep. than most eighteen year olds. Yes. Uh, Got it, interested and experimented and whatever early. Yep. Uh, I don't think she's a lesbian. She just seems sort of fluid with her sexuality. Just sort of <laughs> likes things that feel good. Yeah. Is probably focusing a little too much. Like, it needs to think a little more about the college and a job and a little less about her right. her parts. A L- little more boundaries. A little better boundaries. Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I think there's a lot of chicks that just sort of... Um, get lost in their sexuality and it's like hey what's this guy doing for me what am i doing for myself what feels good and it's like uh okay that that should be a component but just a component right i i I don't know i i wonder if uh i mean it's much easier to do this as a as a as a attractive female than it is as a like asian male you know what i mean it's like hey hey buddy get back to the computer room and start focusing you know what I mean? Chicks can sort of just walk around like, hey, that feels good. Hey, let's do a little three-way kiss. Yeah. And I love that stuff. It's like, it's always, well, it's for us. But yeah, there was dudes watching <laughs> and throwing a ball of $5 bills at us and stuff. But, it, you know, we did it for us. Same same reason we buy the lingerie. For us. So dudes can see it. But for us. For us to feel a way about ourselves when dudes see it. that That's what it is. So it's like. Uh, Jennifer just seems like uh, her whole life is just sort of wrapped up in her sexuality, yeah. and I think society sort of lets cute chicks get away with that. It's mm-hmm. like we're sort of like, oh yeah, so more, more. Yes, 
And, yeah. and that's maybe doing her a disservice, giving yeah. her kind of... Okay, yeah, we get it. You got a vagina. Now, now, now start doing something else. And it works. And, and fight her, yeah. you know, it's fine. Yeah, get a boyfriend, get on top of him, have your orgasm, and go to and, college. And, and don't... don't and, and strangely enough, in spite of all of her engine running the way it does, she's still apologizing for how she is. Stop apologizing. Yeah, it's you're fine. fine. That's how you are. You get a little that's sexual fine. motor running on you. But, but the way you like what you like is fine. You don't have to make a guy happy or whatever. He's, yeah. he's happy if you're there. Yeah. That's it. You know, Drew's a man of great passion. You're a woman of great passion. So there you go. Dan? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, uh, Drew, I could taste the passion oozing out of you in Good Morning America this morning. Oh, yeah. Drew was on uh, GMA. Four in the hey, morning. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking about movies these days. If you guys <sighs> go to the screen, you guys should call your film The Passion of the Pinsky. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, that's good. Top, you know? that way, Dan, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's very creative. Very but creative. Then, yeah, it's 4 a.m., Dan. I want you to know I feel very, very uh, uh, lively tonight because of that. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Oh, but then the problem, of course, would be the news headlines the next day would be drug addiction specialist stoned to death by born again. Yeah, yeah, stoned. Do you get it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. Hey, right, uh, but, Dan. Uh, you know, my question was, Adam, you know, how do you, what's, what's the best way to break into showbiz? I mean, you got, like, Loveline, Crank Anchors, and a man show under your belt. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, you Car I guess if you go, if you go to Corolla, it could be what a carpet cleaning and the carpentry. <laughs> Don't forget red-handed too. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Did I tell you about Anderson? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Dan. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you want to be? A comedian? Com yeah, yeah. That that'd be that'd be cool. Uh, oh, well, I mean, like. How all right, here's the first thing. I could, stop trying to be funny. That's uh, number one. <laughs> it just gets on people's nerves. If 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 you're funny, you'll be funny. But if you try to be funny, it's just going to bother people. Right. All right. So, uh, any comedy club? You want to do some stand-up comedy? Well, sure. I mean, I know there's like there's the clubs in L.A., and I'm stuck in Davis. Is there any uh, is there any uh, clubs in Davis? Uh, no, no, nothing. How come you didn't send him to improv? At the uh, improv, what, well, they don't mm. have any. They don't have any. Um, what do you What do you got at your school? You got a drama department at well, your we, school? We got drama, but then you know it's filled with you know snotty yeah. seventh graders and eighth graders and ninth graders trying to be, you know, the next Tom Cruise. Right. All right. You uh, you got to get yourself uh, involved with some sort of troop that does something. Troop. Okay. Yeah, I don't even. I don't, the problem is he's calling from Davis. I don't even know if they have print there. They have newspapers. Movable what do you guys type. have there? Movable type, you have yeah. movable type? <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I, okay, here's what you got to do. Here's what I would say. I would say, I don't know if they have a version of sort of the drama log or something. Or maybe it's just Probably the back of the uh, local newspaper. Yeah. There's some section. And look at uh, uh, improv troops, groups, comedy groups, comedy clubs. You know what I mean? You, you hook up with a bunch of like-minded people and you, you uh, put on little skits for each other. Wouldn't it be good to be... In Training too, yeah, some places. yeah. To get get go hang out with the drama nerds in high school. I uh, never personally did that because, uh, you know, think about actors. You know, we hate actors for the most part. They're horrible even at seventeen. I mean, these guys wearing a berets and turtlenecks walking around my high school in North Hollywood. You really? know, the actors. Oh boy, yeah. None of them ever made it. Interestingly, how do you think I felt about that? Heartbroken, elated. Yeah, thank you. Let's take a little break. A little Germany or Florida when we come back. What else, Drew? How about line six? Sabotage relationship. Ah, Virgin going to Mexico for a uh, spring break. Pals want him to get laid. All right? All that after this. Thank you for calling Loveline. Your call will be answered in the order it seems interesting. Call Loveline. Call Loveline. Love one nine one. Through. I don't know the name of the hotel I'm staying at in uh, New York, so I told him to guess. But uh, there's, there's 70 hotels <laughs> in uh, Manhattan, and uh, Drew's not, not struck a uh, chord yet. Yes. The one I stayed at last week, that... Uh, Which one? Mer is it Meridian? Meridian. Yeah. Yes, yeah. nice. Good hotel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good location. Beautiful, buddy. Yeah. All right, everybody. It's the love line. Yeah, I go to New York uh, next week. I'm uh, going to go in and do a stern on uh, Thursday. And um, 
called uh, Alec Baldwin because he's doing a play out there. No, oh, cool. Yeah. What about this, by the way? Tell me what this is. So I, I called his uh, secretary, his assistant, and I said, uh, you know, I want to come out and see uh, Alec's play. Can uh, we get a couple of tickets? And they said, yeah, they don't give the uh, they don't give the cast any tickets. No house tickets. Yeah, you got to buy them. And I, and I believe it. I just, uh, what's up? Is it a real small theater? <sighs> I mean, maybe pure economics. They have to support the thing. They have to sell, sell all the seats I, every night. I guess so. If you're Alec Baldwin and you're starring in a Broadway play... Seems like they they cut you a couple tickets. You would think. You would think. Mm -hmm. uh, he could probably pick up, p get on the horn, and uh, figure it out. Then it's like, uh, all right, how much? Uh, like eighty bucks. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't even really want to see the play. I just want to, you know, go, hey, buddy, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I worked with, last time I was out there. Worked with a guy who originated one of the roles in Mamma Mia, and he said, "I'll call and set you up, no problem." Oh, really? Yeah, see, Drew's got some juice. But you know what I mean? That there's the, That's a bigger production, bigger theater, and they, they seem to have no problem. Yeah. This is uh, that nutty Anne Hayes in it. It's probably one of those serious, like, yeah. avant-garde things that I'm going to hate. Mm. Like, uh, I'm corny. Like, I go to play just to give me a phantom and uh, just have some big sort of thing with smoke blown around yeah, and yeah. big organ music and stuff. I, I, don't want, I don't need any statements. Yeah. I don't want to be entertained. I want to, I want a spectacle. I just want to see stuff flying around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why don't you go to Cirque du Soleil or something? Yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, that's all I want. I don't like people being smart with words. Yeah, yeah. I got an ass full of that. Joe? Yes. Using them words. You're 24? Yes, I am. You got a uh, Germany or Florida? I do. Here we go. Here you go. Isn't it Florida or Germany? Germany or Florida. Now it is? Right. <laughs> I'm tired tonight. What's up? Okay, a 63-year-old retired man was convicted Germany. of maligning the memory of the dead after he was seen celebrating the death of his gay neighbor by setting off fireworks and singing with extreme joy as the corpse was being carried away in a coffin. Setting Germany off Florida. fireworks. <laughs> what, what, first of all, okay, multiple things here. Um, the whole idea of desecrating the dead has a little bit of a German feel to it. Uh, I don't know of any state in this union where people are car carried out of their house in a coffin. Well, that maybe meant happen. just in a body bag or something. I don't know, as a neighbor, how you get the heads up <laughs> that, you know, even if even if you see the ambulance pull up front, you don't, you know, how do you know the neighbor's dead? And How do you prepare with the fireworks? How do you... It said that he had a history of fighting with his gay neighbor. How do you put I'm off fire... to that. How do you set off fireworks without getting in trouble in this country? Well, Florida feels like fireworks. Florida feels like gay. Setting them off feels like Germany. The coffin feels like Germany. I'm going Germany. 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 Germany it is. Berlin. Yeah. yeah. We are back. We're back. What? Are you kidding? We're, we're so far back, we're front. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Brad? I, I hear you. And let me say, let me tell you something. Yeah, we hiccuped a little bit uh, last week. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you people. You listen to the show. You've got radios. You've got ears. You've got minds to process the information that's passing from the radio through your, through your ears. Okay. We're not 100%. I never said we were. This is one of my time-killing uh, filibustering speeches. I like the guy who said, I never claim to be perfect. We never say, Drew, did you ever hear me say I was perfect? No, I never said perfect. Damn good. Damn good. Never perfect. Never perfect. And the thing about it is, is yeah, like any great, like any, 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 any great sports figure. Yeah, we stumbled. There was a little, little hitch in our giddy up. But you know what we did? We did what every great one does. We did what the champions do. We got up. We got off the canvas. And we dusted ourselves off. And we went out for the 15th round. And, and we conquered. You understand? I hear you. A uh, lesser man would have stayed down on that canvas. Lesser man wouldn't have gotten up, would have thrown in the towel, but nope. Like a champion. We got back to our feet, we dusted ourselves off, and we came back to play Germany or Florida and uh, really prosper. And I think we got to be four out of the last five now, true. And, and here we go. Time, time for break and uh, a little traffic. And what time is it now? Well, it's uh, 11.51. That's uh, nine minutes away from the uh, top of the hour. That's uh, 12 straight up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ready to go? There we go. We got a virgin here. Derek? Yeah, that's me. You're 19? 
Yep. I gave myself a little headache with that speech. I <laughs> know. Uh, it was pretty great, though. Very it was inspiring. inspiring, though. Yeah. <laughs> What's the question? Uh, question is, um, I'm 19. I'm a virgin. And for spring break, we're going to Tijuana. And uh, a lot of my friends, um, they, you know, they know that I'm a virgin. And they're like, all right, man, we're going to get you unvirginized. You know, we're going to. Mm-hmm. And I just want to know, do you think that's a good idea? They said whether it's some girl that's there or uh, if it comes down to a hooker. Uh, All right, here, here's the whole thing. Um, you have a hard time picking up hotties in TJ. I mean, non-prostitute hotties. Yeah. Um, and the price is not a good idea. The whole part about, well, Mexican horse, fine. There's no disease there. Uh, the whole part about the buddies who get obsessed with you losing your virginity, they're more obsessed with letting you know that they are not virgins than they are right. in you yeah. uh, losing your virginity. Yeah, and I love when guys do this. Kind of hey, buddy, I tell yeah. You. yeah, here's the deal. If, it's, if, 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 if you're a virgin and your buddy isn't, even if he, the only time he got laid was with one of his friends, uh, with sister's fat friends, he's still, he's a million miles away. He is a... He is a he's a, a four star yeah. general, yeah. and you're private. Yes, you understand. He's yeah. a genius, and the more he can rub that in, the better. Now, the reality is, he doesn't really want you to get laid because right. then all of a sudden you're both private. Right, exactly. Or you both. No, no, no. You don't both privates. You don't go to general. He I just see. drops down from general and, to and private. They're also kind of interested. The guys in just seeing you loaded and making fun of you. Yeah, it really, it's about humiliating you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not about you getting having sex. Yeah, none of my friends would have actually. They would have made fun of me, but they would have never dug in and kicked over the fifteen bucks. No. You know that it would have taken collectively. Not to unless get me again, laid. if it'd been up on a stage somewhere and really is something that they could take pictures of and bring home, send yeah. to school and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, no, uh, you know, head out to uh, Ensenada. By the way, you find some chicks camping on the beach. Yeah, you go Ensenada, you'll start finding some chicks. Rosarita, Ensenada, yeah. stay in Tijuana, just get the hookers. But plenty of good strip joints. Well, good times. All right, good times. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. On our front. Alternative. San Francisco. Hey, everybody. Well, that's it. What day is it, Drew? It is uh, Wednesday. That's the tenth to the eleventh. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Will Sasso is coming in here from uh, Less Than Perfect, and uh, also you remember him from uh, Mad TV. Very funny. Tomorrow night. So until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Doctor Drew saying, Mahalo. In order to reach these kids, Hack will have to become a rapist. You know, I can yeah. I be honest with you. I don't find that funny. <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.